shakes out. Scouts game. For you, this is a really strong scouts game as the scouts gather. A couple of players I know we want to talk about. Uh, one playing up as well, but Josiah Hartshorn is a 2025. So is Sean Gamble. They're both playing up. These are two players. Josiah ranked 11th overall. Sean ranked 5th overall. I, I know you're excited to see Josiah play as well today. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Sud, I was, I think, standing sitting right next to you when the first time I saw Josiah Hartshorn play, which was at the uh, the All-Star game yes, back Chase. in Phoenix. First time I'd seen him. And what a performance. What kind of bat speed and the batted ball data. He's crushing balls 108 miles an hour in BP and hitting every ball hard he sees in game just uh, it was a great first look looking forward to seeing him and we all know about Sean Gamble one of the best players in the country in 2025 big left-handed power good athlete you see it right there he's kind of play all over the place play center field I think we've seen him play some infield too. play a shortstop um, a versatile guy with big offensive upside from the left side of the plate who again like Josiah always performs when we see him so if you want to think 90s baseball and you want to think about Benny Agbayani the the big bat, the thrills in New York that he gave his fans. Well, there is a, there's an offshoot now, and it's Bruin Agbayani. We're excited to see him play for that bomb bat scout team today. Yeah, absolutely. A top of the lineup guy. He's going to play shortstop. He's going to lead off. Um, lots to like about the profile overall. A nearly top 100 ranked player uh, for perfect game in the class of 2025. Continues to have a good week this week. Probably ends up in w within that top 100 when we do the re-rank. Uh, but yeah, a really good club here. This bomb bat scout team. Looking forward to seeing him. And then hitting right behind him, Jace Hampson, of course, the third baseman. A guy I really, really liked at WWBA back in the summer. Left-handed power, good athlete. Uh, just a lot to like from both sides. But the USA Prime lineup loaded. Carter Johnson's a potential first-round draft pick. Cale Fountain's a guy who's really rising up boards. We've already talked about the 25s and Hardshorn and Gamble. Kai McGarry rakes towards the bottom of that lineup. Lots to like here. Lots of depth. Lots of good pitching as well. But they'll be tested by this bomb bat team for sure. River Hamilton is on the mound. We'll get to know this Oregon State commit. He's the number six overall player in the state of Oregon. This right-handed pitcher proudly wearing number 99. Just turned 17 years old. Now, he, he's a 2025, so maybe a little bit older for that 25 class. But again, he's got a couple of years to develop. You have a lot of 25s playing up. A pitcher that earlier this year, under the watchful eyes of you guys, was up to 90, or I should say the high 80s, 87 miles an hour. Maybe he will touch 90-something today. We'll see. We've already seen guys PR their velos on these very broadcasts. We just saw it happen a couple days ago. So not wouldn't be surprised at all if we see that. Carter Johnson digs in. Slightly open stance from the left side. Boy, glad to have you with us. And he goes right to work, putting it on the ground. Out to the aforementioned Bruin Agbayani on a cross. Carter Johnson erased right away, not waiting around. Got a strike, went after it. Looks like the boys are ready to play this morning. Coming up, swinging on the first pitch. Good defensive play from Agbayani at short, of course. Quick one. Way to establish the ground, balls, uh, ground ball pitch early. Josiah, as you and I talked about, we, we saw him play and really enjoyed it when he played at Chase Field. Hartshorn takes a fastball from Anaheim, California. He is at Orange Lutheran where he plays for Eric Borba. Chris and Megan are his parents. So trying to find a place to play as he rolls that one foul up the third base line. And there are plenty of opportunities, I'm sure, just taking his time to make his decision. Again, when you're, when you're a player that's a 25, if you fall within the new rules, you just started on August yep. 1st talking to, to programs. Absolutely. And that's something that uh, it feels like I've had that discussion. Lifts one to center. Yeah, picked on a breaking ball. Wind took it a bit. I feel like I've had that discussion with a lot of players and a lot of parents this year in the last couple months specifically that, you know, the, the new rule states that you really aren't even allowed to talk to college coaches until August of your junior year. They're not allowed to offer you. They're not allowed to, to do anything. Um, so that's really taken the industry kind of by surprise, even though we knew it was coming. Uh, just how used to we'd gotten uh, eighth graders and ninth graders committing and that sort of thing. So I felt like I've had a lot of conversations with parents and players about it's okay that you haven't gotten the biggest offer you've ever heard of yet. It's only been, your window's only really been open for a couple months. Just relax, be patient. 
Uh, and that's taken some getting used to for sure. Good pitch straightens up River Hamilton coming high and inside to Sean Gamble. I don't think it's hyperbole when I say this currently, including all classes, is one of the best players in high school baseball. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think anybody would disagree with you there. And, and as a native Detroiter, that old English D looks great on it. <laughs> Well, you never know. I mean, you hope the Tigers play their way out of an early pick, but in two years this is in all likelihood going to be an early pick in the draft. Wouldn't be upset at all if he were to find his way to Detroit. Sean's a two-time <laughs> Select Festival athlete, the number two shortstop in the nation, middle infielder. He is an Iowan by birth, Des Moines, Iowa, but he's at IMG Academy down in Florida. We've seen a, a couple of native Iowans who are now at academies in Florida. Gamble, obviously. Uh, we talk about Blake Larson, who we saw yesterday. Miles Davis uh, we've seen this week. Those are all guys who fit that mold. Good-looking fastball dots the outside corner. Some of the metrics that you guys have seen at showcases at Junior National specifically, he ran a 6'5", 60, threw 93 from the outfield, exit below in the mid-90s as well as he patiently reaches, and that's ball four. Well, we talked about the fact that he had touched 87. What's the velo looking now? Yeah, he's been up to 92. Wow. New, new PR for us, kind of sitting in that 90, 92 range so far. He's thrown one slider at 77, got that fly ball from Hartshorn on it. But, yeah, that's uh, that's new velo, at least as far as our purview. I know you love that, too, as a scout, seeing an, seeing an athlete reach new lengths. With all you guys watching and all the pro scouts watching, is Kale Fountain flies one to right field. We'll introduce you to Kale because he is special. Meantime, Logan Sanchez makes the play. We're underway. Bombat about to swing it in a moment. is a Fox Lane High School guy, Mount Kisco, New York, and a Northeasterner who has made his commitment to St. John's. So a right-hander we're excited to see pitching on this stage. Now, again, you're looking at a 2024, but a 2024 that's still 16 years old. Yeah. Young guy, really lanky, uh, not only young by age, but, you know, young physically just by the look of him. He's got a long ways to go in terms of filling out that frame. Already been in the low 90s with the fastball, and the Johnnies are friends of the program, so we love when they get good players. So go Johnnies. Uh, shouts out to their pitching coach, George Brown. It's an amazing human being. We'll see how he looks. The right-hander, as you said, touching low 90s comfortably. Good fastball. Jumps high. Meet Bruin Agbayani. This right-hander, the son of Benny and Niela. Sister Alea is at BYU Provo. Elana also at BYU. Both his sisters collegiately have gone to, to bring him young. Mom, by the way, played softball collegiately. We, we talked about Dad's career. Most of you know what Benny Agbayani did, but Mom played at Hawaii. Played softball. Not many more gorgeous places to play ball than BYU, eh? You know? Unbelievable. Uh, Utah in general, just the, the unbelievable views of it. Bayani loves watching Lindor play baseball. Obviously a Met like his dad was. The actions that you guys are seeing look pretty good so far as he lines one down the left field line, just spoils the pitch. And contact pays off for Bruin. Yeah, 2-1 count there. I, I'm sure he probably maybe wishes he got that one more. You know, he didn't really barrel that up or anything like that, but still a pretty good piece of hitting. Pitch looked like it's on the outer third. Just kind of slap it that way and, and, and get on base. Jace Hampson, as we talked about, is from Snohomish, Washington. This is an Oregon commit. Fastball jumps high. 
Got a chance to go to Georgia to play in the PG National Championship. Went to area codes, represented the Royals, played in the Seattle Premier League with Elevate Northwest. He's been busy this summer. Agbayani will run. So the correct self-scout there, correct advanced scout from USA Prime to, to try and keep him close, make sure Renz is aware of him. At least give the catcher a chance to throw here. Boy, nearly nipped him. I, I'm telling you, both these pitchers right out of the gates are showing, we'll go glove side. We'll uh -huh. go in. They're not worried about it. And they're both doing it in the 90s. And they both know, you know, it's not, like I said in the open, it's not a guarantee that if you win this game as a 2-1 uh, pool that you'll make it to the next round, but pretty decent chance. So they, these teams know we got to win this game. There's no room for error here. And I think that's the biggest bring people up to speed thing on this broadcast for those that are hopping in maybe on a, on a Saturday morning somewhere is that this is different than a showcase this event. Now, you're showcasing yourself as the runner takes off. The throw sails into center field to so a stolen base. For Agbayani, Bruin swipes it. Yeah, you're showcasing yourself in front of scouts, but this is really team ball here. Yep, we're trying to win games. The, this is no longer about, uh, as we get a replay of the steal here, good jump by Agbayani. Even if the throw is accurate, he's there safely. So, like we said, man, he will run. He's instinctual, son of a big leaguer, son of a coach. The, those things tend to come with it. But, yes, yeah, so it's, it's, we're trying to win games here. Everyone wants to win the championship. This isn't... It's designed for, uh, you know, the players to get looks from scouts. That's why there's 300-plus of them here. That is what this in intention is. But at the same time, it's we're not playing showcase ball here. We are trying to win these games. And right away, because of that, you got a single, you got a stolen base, you got a walk, and then you've got a visit. And it kind of backs up what we're talking about, how all these teams, it's quite important what they want to accomplish I mean, a win means everything, too, to your program. That's something that, you know, is not taken away at all. USA Prime National Detroit Tigers scout team. Mark Nellis Jr. is the vice president of USA Prime National. His third year, he played at West Georgia. John Nestor, South Carolina director. He played at Clemson for three years. He was an A's draft pick, also Padres catching coordinator for a year. Nick Poe, also part of that coaching staff, first base coach, 16 U head coach this past summer, number two team in the country. Pitching coach, you saw him just a minute ago, J.T. Waterboro. Played at Georgia Southern, engineering degree. So that's a little bit about the men leading the young men in the dugout. Have to give mention to Damon Alvis, the USA Prime Scouting Director, uh, mostly because he's a Midwestern guy, so I'll shout him out. He's an Indiana guy. Right-handed bat, this is Adam Haight. That's way inside and off the plate. Got him. And it nipped him. Big spot here early. Big spot here early for Bombat. Renz, it's, uh, you know, the stuff looks like it's coming out fine. It, it doesn't look like there's any sort of, you know, he's just missing. He's just spraying it right now. So needs to refocus up. Understand it's okay if you get out of this having allowed one or two runs. But get you a ground ball here. Get ahead in a plus count. Got to have something to, to get the confidence flowing. Here's a Washington commit. This is Matthew Henning from Seattle. West Seattle High School, where he's at 24, working through his senior year right now. Mom is Caroline. As that breaking ball misses outside. Renz is mostly upper 80s with the fastball so far. He's touched 90, but been kind of sitting 87, 88, and uh, obviously, as we've seen, not quite in command of it yet. Tight. That one runs off the plate. Almost hit him, too. Henning talks about his mom, Carolyn, as being heroic her entire time. It's been the two of them. He grew up without a pops in the house, without a dad. And his mom, he said, she inspires me. She's raised me by herself. I look to my mom for guidance with what she's done. I'm sure she's awfully proud of what she's seeing. Man with a bat in his hands. This time to the right side. Base hit. RBI, I'm sure she's really proud he gets it done. It's a good piece of hitting. Uh, you know, not trying to do too much. Just make contact, move the runners, keep the line moving, get you a base hit there. And, and as smart here of, of bomb bat to not push anything. You have nobody down, no reason to try and send a guy there to potentially uh, uh, get thrown out of the plate or, or create a, an unnecessary out, an unforced error. But 
here we go. We're still rolling. That's funny. Henning talks about who he is as a player, and the one thing he says, first part of the sentence, great back control. He showed yep. it there. That's what that is. That's what that is. It, you know, there's, no, there's really not quite such a thing as, like, directing the ball where you hit it. You know, like, you're really not aiming to hit it anywhere necessarily. But staying within your approach, like understanding, hey, I don't have to hit a ball 120 miles an hour here. I can shoot a ball through the right side. I don't have to worry about doing too much. That allows you to free up that barrel control. He does a good job with it. Eli Selka is from Chula Vista, California, Cathedral Catholic, and he is a University of Hawaii commit. The breaking ball right under his hands, and he fouls it off. Something pretty cool about the dynamic of, like, playing high school baseball in Southern California and then deciding, no, <laughs> I need to go find better weather. <laughs> so I'm going to go to Hawaii for college. Outstanding. He talked about his high school season, saying it wasn't all it could have been. He said, I've been putting in a ton of work to develop, to grow. He said this summer he honestly passed on some pretty big tournaments to work on development. Mm -hmm. He was a teammate a couple of years ago with Marcelo Meyer, who was the fourth pick in the 2021 draft. And Meyer gave him some advice. He said, get to work, get stronger, get a little bit more discipline. And he said, I still need more work to put in. But his words were strong to me, and I took him to heart. So he's here playing in yeah, this event. Absolutely. Testing out that work. And it's a balancing act for every single one of these players. There is such a thing as playing too much. Yeah, there is such a thing as, as kind of overtaxing yourself. So having that understanding of, of being able to, hey, I need to step back. I need to make sure my body's right. I need to make sure my swing's right. There's no use in me playing if I'm not feeling like I'm playing well. And I, I've got a swing and miss there, obviously, as a strikeout. The elevated fastball just kind of got right by him. But either way, there's something to be said for, like, the, the self-awareness of knowing that, hey, I, I need to actually take care of some things first before I go play and show my stuff. And it's smart in a lot of ways. Kauhu Cavella. Leg kick as he takes a fastball that jumps high. He's from Hilo, Hawaii. Kamehameha School's Hawaii camp is where he attends school. 17 years old. Darren, I've been meaning to ask you, and I figure on air is, is probably the best way to do it. Um, how excited are you about the fact that Southern California is now Big Ten country? I'm excited. Yeah. I don't know if everyone in my conference, the Pac-12, is excited, which is... <laughs> Kind of dead man walking, yeah, but I'm very yeah. excited. <laughs> and, and look, I, I think talking, you know, to Coach Waz at Oregon, they jump into that same setting as well. Uh, talking to Andy Stankiewicz, I, on the baseball side, I know they're excited. Yeah. They're yeah. not tiptoeing around. There was a time where they didn't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. That time's gone. Beautiful swing, hugs the line. That one is down, getting a big opportunity in front of scouts. Excellent piece of hitting for Cavella. He gets it done. A couple of more score. Bombat on the run. Yeah, another another big swing. Another good piece of hitting there. Just not trying to do too much. Using the entire field. Being fine with shooting the ball down the opposite field line. And that's a base clear. Or not quite bases clearing. Excuse me. We held the runner at third. But still, an extra base hit. Multiple RBIs. The inning marches on. We're going to get a USA Prime pitching change here. Bombat has him on the ropes early. Yeah, one out, retired, and that's what Renz was able to register. Other than that, there was a single, walk, hit batsman, another single from Henning. Strikeout of Selga, and then that double from Cavella. And Cavella, an uncommitted athlete. Hits like that mean the world to get that chance. Absolutely. And you step in and do that and get it done. We'll reset the situation. We'll take a 90-second break and be back here in Jupiter, Florida. All right, Bombat stepping up loud out of the gates. So the scouts get a look at a different arm, a chance to see a young man out of San Dimas, California, 18 years old. He's at 24, and he's a USD San Diego commit. Fernando Palencia gets the call out of Arcadia High School. And his job here is to stop the bleeding. Yeah, clean it up, huh? It hopefully get you a strikeout, hopefully get you a pop fly, something easy, something where you don't have to worry about the run scoring. Valencia from South El Monte, California. Good-looking fastball. Grabs the inside corner. And Prime, of course, playing their infielders in early. But you kind of have to at this point. You can't let a ground ball sneak through and score two. You got to be able to, to cut it down, stop the bleeding. Araceli and Fernando, his mom and his dad, nearly got a commitment high. Instead, it sails to the backstop. 
And another run scores. What a start for the team based in Oregon. It's, uh, you couldn't draw it up any better, really, Darren, as far as like what you'd like if you're in bomb bed situation. Hey, come out, get a one, two, three first, no problem. And then immediately we're jumping on board. It's four nothing early. We still have a runner at third base with less than two outs. Have a really good opportunity to push this to five here. If we can just maybe get something into the outfield, a fly ball, something like that. But either way, it's hard to imagine a better start for Bombad. Runner at third, working out of the stretch. Everything elevated from the right-handed arms thus far today is running out of room over there. Keep wanting to say Sean Casey. <laughs> that jersey 21. The mayor. Heading over to the wall. <laughs> Obviously, it's not. It's Hartshorn. I wonder if Hartshorn, he doesn't do the, the kick step. Remember that? The, <laughs> <laughs> the kick start to, to start his swing. Fernando, a slider. It's played on a backhand that time. Josh Springer is his catcher. Josh has had to work quite a bit in this one. Hey, by the Roll to the right side, infield drawn in, turning and running to the bag now. There's Josiah Hartshorn with the play. And that's exactly what you needed. Needed to get that out, needed to eliminate that, uh, you know, we don't have to get a hit to score a run here. Now you can't throw a wild pitch, obviously, but that was a, a good start to getting out of this jam. Yeah, ground ball out, Kekoi Young, the first baseman. Mark Weepert now. Weepert from Sherwood, Oregon. Oregon State committees at Wilsonville High School. He'll catch. He'll play in the corner of the infield as well. High School State semifinals for Wilsonville High School this year. And he's at 25. Pretty pitch, just a little bit low. Good spot there. Doing a good job of owning that inner third so far, at least. And I know we talked about in, uh, early that both starting pitchers were having no problem throwing inside. That was a little bit more wildness, I think. I think this might be more intentional. He's trying to own that inner third. He went right back in there. Uncomfortable contact. He goes ahead and turns it into an out himself. Fernando comes in, restores order, but Bombat, big swingers out of the gates. They lead it 4 nothing. Keohu Cavalu with a big double and a pair of RBIs. The Hawaiian making a big statement. Four to nothing is the score. Luis Gonzalez is our home plate umpire. He works this one out in the bases. Antonio Pinzon. The umpires have been on this field quite a bit, earning these assignments, and they've done an excellent job. Strike zone consistent, helping for the pitchers. And when you're working by yourself on the bases, it's not easy. Not easy, not all the time. Brian Sikowski, Darren Sutton, glad to have you back. Josh Springer leads it off. Springer the catcher. Four-hole hitter was Fountain right behind him. Springer in that five-hole protecting. Ward can commit out of Corona, California, the Inland Empire. Fastball has him spinning out there right at that belt buckle. He's at Corona High School is Springer. Dad is Johnny. Mom is Andrea. I was watching Logan O'Hoppy play for the Angels, if you've noticed that. Hit hard on the ground, out to short. Agbayani flexes the arm. And he gets the catcher, Springer. 
Team gets you a couple of runs. Pitcher comes out throwing strikes. It's a thing of beauty. Hamilton. That breaking ball was belt high. But again, contact, though it firm, it was right out to Agbayani. Colt Myers now, the second baseman. Myers is a Floridian from St. Augustine. He's at St. John's Country Day. He's a senior this year. Just about anywhere outside of first base is where he plays on the infield. That one sails high and inside. And if you remember the relief pitcher, Brett Myers, that's dad. Mom is Kim. And Brett Myers had a long career in the big leagues. 15 years as a pro, 12 in the big leagues. Mom played field hockey at Ohio. Big swing right back to the screen. You like that 2-0 cut? I did, yeah. Anytime you can get a, a rip off like that, and again, that's a good swing there, even though not the pitch wasn't right down the middle like the last one was. But 2-0 count, you're in a plus count. You're in a hitter's count. You're thinking fastball. You're thinking drivable zone. Absolutely take a rip. Rivel Hamilton runs it to 2-2, two and two, got the foul back, then threw a nice breaking ball on 2-1. take off the plate that time. Hamilton's shown some pretty good stuff. Like we said, he's been up to 92. He has, we haven't seen him throw a ton of pitches yet. I think he's maybe only at 15 pitches total, but another swing and miss there. He's throwing pitches in the zone. He, he's mixing in the breaking ball. It's long and projectable. Uh, present velocity, arm speed, body. Yeah, and a he, lot to like there. He set that one up nicely, Brian. Yeah. He, he went breaking ball, breaking ball, which made that pitch Looked like it was about plus three or four miles an hour. Absolutely, and in a perfect location, too, at the knees away. He went right back in that same spot, and Caleb Barnett pops it up to the right side, running out of room. A lot of bullpens out there. I think we should do this like a uh, banana ball, where if a scout catches it, it's an out? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. If you hit a golf cart on the fly, it's, it's double, but if the scout reaches out and catches it, it's an out. I take my chances that the scout's not making the play. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> one and one, the count to Barnett, <laughs> who, by the way, is a 25. He's at Mountain Brook High School. He's an Alabama commit. Beautiful high school, Mountain Brook. Two and one, the count. A lot of those high schools in the general Hoover, Birmingham area that we use for when we're in there, outside of the Hoover Met Complex, absolutely beautiful. Tried to sneak a fastball down into the zone, did we? But I'm trying to remember Mountain Brook. Does it? It's built up against a hill, isn't it? With just lights and yeah. score. It, yep. just, it looks like a Division II college stadium. If I'm remembering right, I'm pretty sure I saw Elijah Green hit a ball 500 feet there a okay. couple summers ago. I think I'm thinking of the right place, but either way, I do know for <laughs> sure that Mountain Brook is a gorgeous setting. I think I recall sneaking over there for a game as well, my friend. Back out there. He likes that spot. Three and two. If he puts it there again, he's going to get a K. I don't know if it'll be looking or swinging, but if he puts it there again, I think he'll get a strikeout. River just turned 17 years old. His three, two. He's getting comfortable on that glove side. Now we've got a little bit more of the plate. Already dancing into the 90s velocity-wise. Well past his perfect game personal record. Popped up, right side. Foul territory, right, running out of room behind the first base dugout. River, by the way, he, he got an opportunity to hop out in the field, do some work. He reached base a couple of times against GBSA Rays in that loss. He was 0 for 1 with a pair of walks. We like on base. Walks are good. Overthrew a breaking ball, and it's ball four. So Caleb with a two-out walk. Bring up a guy who's, uh, you know, these these really big, really powerful, really loaded roster teams. Obviously, they have excellent players hitting down in the lineup. That We talked about it with the Canes on the air yesterday. Danny and I did. It, it happens. Kai McGarry is not a number eight hitter. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's almost weird to see him there. He's, he's a really, really good bat-to-ball guy, just a talented hit tool, a good athlete. He's got some power. 
Uh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if we see a rope somewhere here. It seems like every time he comes to the plate, I see him hit a ball hard. He picked him off. Beautiful athletic move to first. Frustrated with that call is Barnett. But right on top of it, making the call was Antonio Pinzone. Let's take a look here at the replay. Definitely leaning. I don't know about that hand or not, but either way, I, he he was leaning. I, I probably would have called him out too, Darren. What a nothing. Beautiful day, some cloud cover making things a little bit more mild on occasion here in Jupiter, Florida. Fernando Valencia gets ready to go to work. He's already been up to Brian Zakowski was sharing up to 93 miles an hour as he fires strike one to Nico Lowe. That's a personal record at PG events. Yeah, we're... Uh, uh, it's, it, this is a place where guys, they, they set their new velo mark. It happens all the time. We love when we see it. Uh, River Hamilton from the uh, from Bombad up to 93. He was up to 93. Yeah, he I jumped Fernando a little bit. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> We're, we've worked together before. It was seamless. It was absolutely seamless. Uh, but yeah, River said he was, those guys, the West Coast guys that sometimes we don't see for a long time, long stretches. And he's played in a couple events this year, but the last time he pitched in a PG event was back in January at MLK in Arizona. And he came to PG World Series in the summer but did not pitch. So the last this time to the last time we saw him pitch, it's been 10 months. So, yeah, that's a big velo jump, six miles an hour in 10 months, and he looks great. Nico Lau takes a pitch that is outside and off the plate, lives in Honolulu. He's a senior at Mary Knoll School. Uncommitted athlete, he's looking at Hawaii. He's looking at Hawaii Hilo or Hartnell College. He's the son of James and Cynthia. And not to take anything away from Palencia, he's been up to 91. There we go. Yeah. Good. So I wasn't that got, far off. Nope, I feel nope, better nope. about myself. A double velo is going. Right in on the hands. A little swinging bunt. Charging, fielding, firing, and not in time. Well, again, he came in, and it was an uncomfortable piece of contact. But for Nico, that was perfect. Absolutely. And guys, left-handed hitters who, who are looking to hit the ball on the ground, slap it and run. He's that kind of guy. He's got speed, and that couldn't have worked out better for him. I, he didn't even look where the ball went. That was a, a slow ground ball to third. His head was never pointed in that direction. He whipped it around to first base and just took off. Now here's a nine-hole hitter who's got that kind of talent. As Brian says, when you get deeper rosters, you get nine-hole hitters that are stars and starters for their high school teams. That's Logan Sanchez. He's from Pearl City, Hawaii. He'll play in the outfield, also a talented left-handed pitcher. And he's asked to drop down a bunt, and he drops it down foul. Generally speaking, like philosophically, I hate small ball. Philosophically. Okay. I just, I don't, I, I want to see guys swing. I want to see guys hit the ball hard. Like, that's my, my goal, my view. But when you know how to do it, small ball is still pretty fun. Don't tell anybody I said that. Okay. But, yeah, it, this is pretty fun. How about strongly dislikes? Yeah, there okay. we go. Yeah, yeah, strongly dislikes. I sounded very parental when I, just, I said that. My philosophy on it is nobody's best swing is a backside ground ball. Mm -hmm. And that is so much of what the let's move runners, let's hit behind the runner, you know. And I'm like, we're taking away the opportunity for a guy to take his best swing in that situation. That's really the gist of it. But well-executed small ball is very, very fun to watch. All right, there's a good-looking cut. It was a hit and run. Beautiful throw down. It is waiting. My goodness, Josh Springer, he flexed. Had 2-1-5 on that pop there, Darren, which is uh, pretty solid for a, a high school kid. Pretty good. And the, uh, the accuracy of it is what made that. He didn't, uh, shortstop didn't even have to move his glove. Fernando did a nice job, too, making sure he got mm -hmm. quickly to the plate, athletically working to the plate. So you get that first out. You have the nine-hole hitter in Sanchez. Breaking ball, dying ground ball back behind the bag. There you'll have it, another infield hit. That's a couple in this inning. Absolutely. Putting the pressure on the defense. These guys all run. They all play uh, different. Uh, they'll, they're all familiar with the kind of slap and run style, the bunt, the make guys react to you defensively. And that's not necessarily what this is, but they're used to, hey, let's hit the ball on the ground and take off. Got some runners in the bottom of the lineup forcing the defense to make above average plays, which they have not done. And that's how they've kept these runners moving. Bruin Ogbayani. He singled, stole a base, and scored back in the first inning. Wrap that slider off the outside corner. 1-0 the count to Bruin. I can remember there was so much fever and furor around Dad. And that'll happen. You perform in New York, even if it's for a couple of years. You get hot in New York, there's nothing better. 
Ed hit big home runs. And it's fun to see him having his own journey, completely separate, completely different. I'm excited to get to know him over the, the coming days. Briefly chatted with him before the game. I take a look at the Perfect Game website, Brian, and I see a grade of 9.5 mm -hmm. for this 16-year-old. He's at Iolani High School. That leads me to a question. As that fastball is outside, what does that mean from you scouts at PG 9.5? So the, the scouting scale within PG is different than the 2080 scale that Major League Baseball uses to scout. And we still use 2080 when we're, we're talking about draft players in their draft year, but, you know, the vast majority of players that we evaluate really don't have Major League tools. So why would we grade them on the Major League scale? So we created our own. And we go 1 through 10 with it. 10 is obviously the best you can get. 9.5, obviously just shy of 10. What that means is we think you're really, really good, but we're going to wait to slap the 10 on you until you are in your draft year, and we decide at that stage. So I would imagine that once Bruin Agbayani comes to BG National next year, he will get his 10. Good stuff. By the way, he homered against Baseball U at this event. He's already got a homer on his resume. He's got two, three hits now and a couple of walks. Yep. So it's been a good tournament. Playing really well, impacting the game in, a, in multiple ways. Uh, you know, it's easy to look at the offensive stats and, and make your determination about a player in that sense, but that's not scouting. That's not really even thinking critically at all, you know, just to look at the stats. So a guy like that who performs and he gets on base and he hits for some power and he kind of does everything and he plays good defense, well-rounded player. Wagging that bat is Jace Hampshire. And he takes a breaking ball right down the middle. Does the Oregon commit? Good way to get ahead. Couple of runners on. Breaking ball, but then a fastball in. He has a hit in each game. Just Jace, he has a walk in this game, so he's been on three times. Stolen base a couple of games ago. Got a chance to do some damage here. This is when you want that third hit of the tournament right now. He's got good speed out in front of him on the base pads as well. On bat scout team, Portland, Oregon is their home base. Through their time, they've had 49 college commits, five players drafted that have worn their uniform. Went right back on the inside with a slider. Yeah, it's a, he's found, it, it feels like that uh, Palencia has found a little bit more success, a little bit more comfort pitching backwards. Starting guys off with breaking balls in the zone, getting strikes called, uh, and then, you know, when you have the fastball and then maybe doesn't have the command of it that he wants, but when you set it up with the breaker, you get a little bit more room for error. It's funny, in, in dealing with a lot of these athletes, they've shared, not really superstitious. If I get hot, if I get cold, there are socks I might wear. I, I try to avoid it. There, there's some kind of old soul, if you will, in that thought, but not Chase Hampson. He's, he's a Batman undershirt guy no matter what. We love it. We love it. The Dark Knight himself. <laughs> two and two the count. <laughs> Back to the screen it goes. I, I've got to ask you. Are you a superstition guy? You've coached for a long time. Are you a superstition guy in this game? When I was a kid, I thought I was because everyone else was doing it. But as I got older, the really the only thing that I would make sure is um, if I had to throw BP, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure I was wearing the same shorts every time I threw BP. Okay. Just for no other reason other than, like, it talked me into thinking I was feeling more comfortable and therefore my BP was better. Smart play. Well, we'll see how it works out. Probably not going to let him get away with that, but a smart play nonetheless by Kale Fountain. Yeah, they went ahead and called it. They're still deciding. Yep, they, they went ahead and ruled it out. Yeah, you're exactly right. Antonio Pinzone said, nope. <laughs> They've seen that before. <laughs> We're not letting you do that. So a line out and a soft one at that. Coaches, I'm getting an explanation from the umpire. I, you can't do that. You know, like there specifically says you can't do that, but I suppose if he's asking, 
um, if there was no infield fly called or something along those lines. But either way, I think we, we had the right result there. That's just the batter's out. Let's roll to it, two down. Yeah, you can see what I'm talking about here. It's just a little soft liner, and Kale Fountain at third is thinking, or it's more of a pop-up than a liner. He's thinking, hey, if I drop this accidentally, I'm going to be able to turn two rather than just get this one out on the pop fly. And it was probably too quick to have infield fly called in that scenario. But as we know, we're wise to that trick. So they don't, they don't let you get away with that anymore. Adam Haight. Takes a fastball outside and off the plate, does Haight. Bubba, as he is known by his mates, the Oregon State commit from Snohomish, Washington. He's an honor roll student, really strong in the classroom. Brother plays baseball at Seattle University, his bro Andrew. And his cousin plays hockey at Michigan State. Excellent. I knew I'd pique your interest with that one. Go green, go white. One and one the count. I'm going to guess as that one is rolled out towards short. Going the short way for the out that most of these Washington athletes, even though he plays for the Arizona Diamondbacks, cheer super hard for Corbin Carroll, who's a native of their home state. That team with a lot of Washington players is on top four to nothing. Brian Sikowski, Darren Sutton, and you, thanks for hanging out with us. We're at Jupiter, Florida. This is pool play day three at the Worldwood Bat Association World Championship tomorrow is when we move into the championship round. Those that survive and win their pool or get an at-large bid. Now, those that don't still have games. I mean, there will be consolation games, and those are so important for athletes yep. just to get one more rep in front of a scout. Absolutely, and that's the literal intention of the design is, hey, you're out, you're not playing for the championship anymore, but you still have good players because you're a good team because this is Jupiter and we don't bring bad ones. Right. So, you know, there's there's guys you need to pitch who haven't pitched yet that scouts need to see. Uh, maybe they're following up with, with trying to get another three or four at-bats. Tough between play. Between hop, very tough play. And you, were, you were talking about Kai McGarry as someone who at this point would be and is the starter at Sandra Day O'Connor High School. He's a senior. He's an ASU commit. McGarry at Sandra Day O'Connor. If, you, if you're a fan of big league prospects that have come quickly and recently, Nolan Gorman went to Sandra Day O'Connor. I spent quite a bit of time at Sandra Day O'Connor High School when Nolan Gorman was there <laughs> over the years. <laughs> That's another beautiful setting to watch a game. I love that setup there at, at O'Connor. We love our Phoenix High School baseball. That's my home state. That one jumps high and out of there. It's later to Brun, the left fielder. We also love out there in Arizona fall, and it arrives about Halloween. So we're excited that it's coming soon. Getting close. We still are in the 90s. That scares the rest of the nation when you say that. We're thrilled with the 90s. Yeah, 90s are fine in Arizona. I have no issue with you it. You go say that in the Northeast or yeah. in Michigan right now, they're 90s. 90s. That's <laughs> disgusting to people. We love the 90s. Slater DeBrun is from Bend, Oregon. Beautiful Bend. He's a Vanderbilt commit. Playing a bunch of his fellow uh, Pacific Northwesterners here. Julian Steven, his parents, he's got a twin sister. Both of them 16. Aggressive swing, but he comes up empty. That's a 2 0 hack. Absolutely. Again, we love it. I know you came up empty there, but look to do damage. 2-0, look in your, your preferred zone, your power zone, and if you get fastball there, don't, you know, don't miss it. You talk about Vanderbilt where he is committed in Ivy League level education. His dad was, a, was an Ivy League athlete. Dad went to Brown and played squash. Awesome. College squash player. You can take a look at a bunt, but he would watch as that one sail high. USA Prime down four is not in, you know, panic mode or anything yet. It's okay to, to play for one or two, chip away at it, et cetera, et cetera. But if we get into the fifth inning or so, I doubt we'd be seeing a sacrifice bunt attempts. That's a good at bat. Good at, took a big rip at the one pitch in the zone, came up empty, but didn't get frustrated, didn't expand after that. Take your walks, get on base. Walks are good. 
And to Brian's point, it sets the stage for C.J. Carter Johnson, the Oxford, Alabama native. He's at Oxford High School. We see them a lot at PG's High School Showdown each and every year. Mm -hmm. that, that event's coming up right around the corner in early March, late February in One of our Alabama. Best. I One like that best. event. The showdown's awesome. I like that we're growing it regionally in some other spots. I know in Arizona, mm -hmm. California, too. I pull for those to grow as large. Absolutely. A little bit less of a flight for you. Selfishly. <laughs> Nice job. Hamilton, really a good long pause, but he runs that one high. And we talk about that for young pitchers. Sometimes the anxiety of the moment, and it's normal, will creep mm -hmm. up on you. And it's when you're standing on that mound, the concept of, as we'll have a quick visit, the concept of keeping runners and keeping them close, it's not always about, and most of you know this, it's not always about the pick. It's not always about the step off. Sometimes just putting some lead in their legs by mm -hmm. pausing is the best thing you can do. And Max Scherzer was really the one who kind of brought that to the forefront of the public's attention, that concept of like, no, I actually don't ever have to throw over to control the running game. And you see it, you know, you, everybody remembers the videos, and I think it was even when he was back in Detroit, of him in the bullpen before the game, no ball, I don't even know if he had a glove on, on the mound, just practicing his holds, practicing his timing, varying, okay, three-second hold, six-second hold, one-second hold, never giving the runner confidence that he's timed him up, and they... He doesn't ever have to pick off if he does that well. And so we're seeing that more and more and more at the amateur level with success, of course. And we're learning that so much of stealing bases is not at all about the catcher. It's not at all about the catcher. It's about the pitcher and it's about the runner. A couple of runners out there. He gives a couple of looks. And we're watching it happen right now, just varying. As that one is a high fly ball, well struck toward right field, toward the wall it goes. Over his shoulder, and it's up against the wall. That should play the pair, trotting into second. With the double, two runs scored. Explosive swing by Carter Johnson. Yeah, that was a rope, and that's just one of those low tension, easy bat speed with power swings. One of those gorgeous left-handed strokes. I actually thought he hit it out when he got it, but uh, we'll see it here. It fell just shy. I think it might have went off the wall, but either Ooh. way. Gorgeous swing. Beautiful, just beautiful swing. That's what we're talking about. Tension-free bat speed, and he crushed it. Looks like, uh, yeah, one hop up against the wall there in the deepest part of uh, right field. And just like that, here comes Prime. Oh, Carter, what a year he has had. Oxford won the 6A State High School Championship. He was invited to carry to go be a part of USA's PDP. Went to the top 40, went out to California, fought for that spot. Went to Taiwan. It's just been a, a wonderful journey for him. Talking to those guys that played for USA in Taiwan, I was having a conversation with PJ Mor Morlando the other day about it actually was. This one's going to be, it looks a little fouled on the line. Loud but foul. The, uh, the interesting thing you ask is, I, uh, do they pitch you differently? What's it like? Did you have to get totally used to something new in terms of approach and philosophy? And he's like, man, everyone over there throws rise balls. It's rise ball splitter. And you don't necessarily see a ton of that over here in the States, even the dudes, even the guys who throw really hard. So getting used to that dynamic was, was something that took us a little while. And I think that's interesting uh, just in terms of how guys will attack you varying country to country, even state to state in some ways, versus talking about the stuff or the velocity or something like that. Yeah, visually, it must be intriguing to quickly have to be on the uptick. It's almost like you're dealing with a softball pitcher then if you're talking mm -hmm. about that approach. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what he said. Like, He's like rise I, ball, drop ball in a softball game. Exactly. That's what PJ said. He's like, I, I never had to think about the ball coming up at me before. And that's what they make you think about. There's so much rise on those four seamers. There's some rise on that one. They wanted it there with two strikes. You could see Weeper came up out of the crouch and asked for it there. It's a good job by uh, Hartshorn to lay off. That's a tough pitch to lay off, especially in a 1-2 count. Played in the PG All-Star game, Trinity League Rookie of the Year. He was a USA man at the 12U age group as that one is rolled to the right side. A little sprint to the bag, beating him to the bag, and in time for the out. Keikoa Young, the first baseman. Runner moves to third, so it did accomplish that goal. Now you have, you got to cash this runner in. That's where you have to be if you're walking to the plate here and you're Sean Gamble. That guy has to score. Infield's playing back. You don't have to try and crush a ball in the outfield to get the run home. But you need to get this dude home. It needs to be four to three uh, heading into the, the bottom of the third at least. 
trying to recall if MLB has announced the destination of the 25 All-Star game yet. I know Chicago was in the running, Wrigley Field. That's his favorite team. So mm. he loves the Cubs. And we had a great conversation about, can you imagine if you keep playing it this way and at this pace and you're a, a guy that gets invited by MLB to come to the draft and they do it in or around Wrigley Field, your favorite ballpark, and you get drafted? It'd be amazing. It'd be amazing. He's not afraid to look ahead. I, I love this generation of athletes. They are old souls. They don't love the pitch clock, interestingly enough. They don't <laughs> like any of that stuff in the big leagues. But they're not afraid to dream and openly share about it. Mm -hmm. You go back a generation, a lot of athletes would have just said, team, 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 don't ever think about it, which is dishonest because quietly you do. Mm -hmm. But these athletes will share their stories. As that one is low, skips on by. There's your run. Now... A free and easy approach, even more so for Gamble, as Carter Johnson trots on home. And that's uh, that's what you can't have. The, those are the little mistakes that you can't make against teams like this, this caliber. And Danny and I talked about it quite a bit on the Canes broadcast yesterday. You know, you just you cannot make mistakes against them. You can't allow a, a runner from third to score in a wild pitch. You can't give them an extra out via error. You can't airmail a throw to, to home and then allow the guy who hit the single to now get the second base. Those little mistakes add up so quickly against teams of this caliber. And Bombat's really good. I, they still obviously are winning this game. But those are the little things that you're going to start thinking about, especially if USA Prime ties it and takes the lead. Gamble's been patient. He's now walked twice in this game. And Kale Fountain gets the call. Kale went after the first pitch, didn't get a chance if you've never seen him play to introduce you to Diesel as he is known. He's been on this platform being watched by folks for years, even going back to the pandemic. Jupiter, he played, it, played up in that event. He's from Lincoln, Nebraska. He's at Norris High School. He's a senior. He's a Jay Johnson LSU commit. He's just a big presence, too. Big dude. Big dude with all and kinds has of power. Been. Absolutely. One of the better power guys in the class just in terms of the, the raw ability to hit baseballs really hard and really far. Um, playing third base, that's something that scouts are paying close attention to. He's a third baseman by trade, but given how big he is and given how big he might become, still got some room on that frame to grow. You know, it wouldn't shock anybody if he's 6'5", 250 when he's, when he's playing in the big <laughs> leagues. And it's, it, it, so the question becomes, all right, do we think he can really play third base? Because then the positional versatility, the positional value comes into play when you're talking about his draft stock. And guys who can really play third are more valuable than guys who have to play first base. So that is a really big sort of evaluation point for scouts this week with him watching him play third base. Hung a breaking ball, and it's hit hard down the left field line, but it's foul. You're lucky when that one's a strike, and that's all it is. I think I saw his eyes click open. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> Fountain has a, a fun story about his home life, and you talk about the Fountain boys when you say that. That's really true. He has all male cousins. His grandparents have 11 grandsons. Goodness. Can you imagine the, the food they have to keep around the house? <laughs> and they're all these genetics where they might be massive. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty pitch. I think that breaking ball was in his mind. He snuck a fastball by yep. him. And that's a, just a, a good example of, of kind of knowing how to pitch, knowing how to set up hitters. You throw that hanger. You get away with it by four feet on the foul ball. And then, hey, let's just come right back with the heat on the outside corner. Definitely not what Kale was looking for in that situation and couldn't pull the trigger. Josh Springer, the catcher, had a really nice throw earlier in this game. He gets a chance to swing it. There's the breaking ball we spoke of. Yep. Josh grounded out to short back in the second inning. Hamilton's obviously run into way more trouble this inning than he had in his first couple, but that's an ugly swing. And it's fired into center field. He lost his footing there. Runner heads back. But the point being, even if he's had some trouble, Carter Johnson hits that ball really far, he's walked a guy or two, whatever it is, he still looks good. That fastball is still coming out hot. He's hitting both edges with it. That breaking ball when he commands it, glove side especially, has been good. He looks great. This is a guy who's definitely going to be rising up in our 2025 rankings. Hamilton is not throwing away his shot at all. Not today, not, not any day. Not throwing away his shot. You're 
welcome to break into song if you'd like about that breaking ball. <laughs> Hamilton, beautiful pitch. You're right, it was a bumpy inning. There was a hard hit ball. Carter Johnson nearly hit it out. Three runs come across. A couple of strikeouts puts things back in order. Four to three. This is a good one here in Jupiter. One of the great scouted events in all of amateur baseballs here in Jupiter, Florida. One of the great scouts is sitting right next to me, Brian Sikowski. I'm Darren Sutton. And wherever you may be, if you're just getting your coffee going out west, or if you're a little later mid-morning with us here back east, glad to have you with us here from Jupiter, Florida. We, over the years, have streamed games from this event, just over the last couple of years, really, and been from the stadium. Now, we love the stadium. We think it's fun, and it's nice that it's there because in the spring time, it allows for big league spring training. But this event isn't really about a stadium. That's why we're out here. Yeah. Broadcasting from the quad is is really kind of capturing the essence of Jupiter, in my opinion. I, th I think this is this is awesome because the quad is – that. That's what it is. That's Jupiter. You don't think the stadium when you think of Jupiter. You think Saturday night, you know, <laughs> late, the late slot, the only quad going is Marlins side. Everything's lit up. Everybody's here, crowded around, all those golf carts you see. That's Jupiter. So I, I think this is awesome. Amazing job by the PGTV pro production crew and you guys and getting everything set up because this is really cool. Yeah, a lot of forethought. Jim Jenks, Chloe, bro. Steve, Banta, everyone planning and building this thing all out. They've spoiled us for sure. 1-0 the count. Aggressive swing. Gets to the right side, though, on the ground. And Colt Myers is there, the second baseman. And Matthew Henning, who singled in a run back in the first, is a 4-3 victim. Just what you want to keep doing if you're Palencia. Uh, out here, again, for his, his third inning of work or wh whatever it ends up being. I think he's, he came in in the first. I don't remember exactly how, how many outs were recorded. Either way, into his third inning of work, just keep throwing strikes, get some early weak contact, keep, this, keep them at four runs. Your job is to keep them at four runs. Let your teammates get back into the game on the offensive side. They just hung a three spot last inning. Here we are again getting ahead 0-1. Palencia's been pitching well. Eli Selga struck out swinging back in the first inning. Opens up those hips and rockets that one foul. So we'll do it with the foul ball. 0-2 the count. Be interested to see how he wants to finish him off here, Palencia. He's, he's been comfortable with multiple pitches, so hasn't has the opportunity to do whatever he wants here. It's like high cheese. Very effective. That's a great two-strike pitch. A little bit of back spit on it. Absolutely. Perfect spot for it, too. Right there about the letters. Tempting, too tempting to pass on, even though it's a ball. This is Cavello back in the first inning. Beautiful approach play to the pair. Absolutely. We talked about that already. Just the willingness to use the whole field, not closing yourself off to only having to pull the ball. That kind of thing, that kind of approach. It leads to so many more hits, so, many, so much more success. And that's what that was. Ohu Cavello. Two RBI double. A well, pretty good pitch just off the plate inside. He's kind of got that uh, front door, that little swing back action going on the two seamer right now. That one didn't quite get back enough to get called a strike, but that's the approach. Throw it at his front hip, front hip, and let it run over the inside third. That, that last pitch was 94 miles an hour. There's some giddy up, Brian. Absolutely. It's been anywhere from 90 to 94 with it. That 94 was his top. He's only hit it once. Has a couple 93s. Good showing. Three and one the count as the corner extends just a little bit. Cavallo still 17 years old. Three and two. That fastball's riding up out of the zone. When he gets that up in the zone a little bit, it's taken off to the arm side. It's taken off up. Guys are not catching up to it. He caught up to that one. Base hit center field. That one got a lot more of the plate. He was ready for That was a pretty short, quick approach. Absolutely. Keep it compact, keep it short, two strikes. We're not trying to do too much. Just get the ball in the barrel. That's exactly what that was. Fastball just in a hittable spot. Quick little stroke, quick hands. Another base hit. 
kind of the Freddie Freeman-like approach. Yeah. Okay, Cole Young grounded out to the first baseman back in the first inning. Slider dips just off the outside corner. It's a good pitch. A good pitch in a good spot. Uh, you know, if you're sitting dead red on a fastball and you get that, maybe you pull the trigger and come up with an empty swing, and, and that was a ball. It was a good take, but still, that was a pretty good pitch. Okay, Cole is a Vegas guy. He makes his home just outside of the city and goes to Bishop Gorman High School. Powerhouse, Bishop Gorman. Chris Sheff has taken that program back over. He's the number three first baseman. Keikoa is in Nevada, as ranked by Perfect Game. He's an active travel ball player. This is 52nd mm. PG event. Underneath that one, as he lifts that one foul back behind. Love those Vegas guys. Love those Vegas players. He was one for three against Baseball U prospects. Had a 494 on base at the recent 18U Fall National Championship in Arizona. Left a breaking ball out over the plate. Boy, it's tough to play that on a backhand. Look at the two working together. Still unable to make the play, though. Really interesting, uh, not interesting, really good recovery from Carter Johnson there. That, that ball ate up Colt Myers on the backhand. Yep. But kind of kicked it off the glove accidentally right to Carter Johnson coming through, who who threw it wide. He might have actually had a chance to get him at first if he'd made a better throw, but look at this. Yeah, the backhand just comes up on him, eats him up. Johnson's right there, makes a pretty good play, but that that was not intentional, folks, at home. That was, that was unintentional <laughs> there, but still looked pretty cool. Mark Weepert. Hit a soft line drive back to the mound to end things in the first inning. That's when Fernando Palencia started to feel really comfortable when he got that uncomfortable contact against the Oregon State commit. Weepert fouls that one off. We put a heck of a football player, too. Says he has to grind it a lot more at baseball for success. Football comes a little bit easier. That's how I felt. I wasn't a high-profile athlete in either sport, don't get me wrong. But football was always my better sport. I just liked baseball more for some reason. <laughs> he plays on three sides of the football as he rolls that one foul. Special teams. Defense, offense, and he is all conference in all three areas. Led the state in solo tackles on the defensive side. It'll be interesting to see what his future holds. He looks up to Adley Rutschman, who yeah. did both into college. Yep. Adley Rutschman, the star for the Orioles, was a kicker when he went to Oregon State. Legendary kicker. <laughs> Lively fastball, good 0-2 pitch. You can just imagine those fall conversations, you know, with Adley Rutschman. Of, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm going to be the first overall pick. I'm the heart and soul of this Oregon State team, which is a national title contender, but I need Saturday off. i got to go kick, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful slider. That one dots the outside corner. That's a big pitch. That strands a couple of runners. We've got a good one here, 4-3. The team out of Oregon is on top here in Jupiter, Florida. Back in the second inning, USA Prime Tiger Scout Team. River Hamilton. It'll be interesting to see how River responds this inning. Go, 
hold the hands in, lifts that one up to the right side, and we'll do it again. Savannah has such a rich history of those that have gone on to play at the next level. You're talking about hundreds and hundreds of players who have played here. Thousands have gone on to college out of this mm -hmm. event. Breaking ball, ground ball. Easy chance, Agbayani. We're pretty much, so you talk about thousands, we're, we're pretty much at the point with Jupiter, mostly. It's not 100%, it never would be, but we're pretty much, if you're here, you, you're you going to play college baseball. Okay. If, you're, if you are on one of the teams that is coming to Jupiter and you play on that team, you play, you're one of the starters or whatever, you, you're probably good enough to play college baseball somewhere. In fact, I'd, I'd almost say, like, you are good enough to play college baseball somewhere. I don't know if we have any players here who aren't capable of playing somewhere in college. And that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing to think about, that every player here is probably good enough to play college baseball. A breaking ball. That one hung out over the plate, and it's belted as it should have been. Just shy of the track. It's gobbled up out there by Nico Lau. He fires it back in. It's two bases for the designated hitter, Caleb Barnett. Wearing that number nine, long and lean. Looks like Nick Castellanos out there, but uh, that's a Tigers fan of your co comment. But, yeah, like you said, Sud, just got a little bit too much plate. Did not miss it. Ball was struck well. It's a good swing. That body's got some room to grow, too, and he's going he's gonna to have some real, real power at the end of the day. But a good swing, not trying to do too much, get the barrel on it, double. Kai McGarry now. McGarry didn't hit it hard, but picked up a single and scored back in the third inning as he squares the bunt and comes up empty. And Brian Groan sitting next to me. <laughs> it, it wasn't a groan as much as it was a grunt of dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I think McGarry rakes, so I'm I just like, I, whatever. They had something on there. If he gets it down, it's a safety steal or something of that variety. There's the swing and a good pitch to fight that swing off, a breaking ball. Hamilton in a, in a good position here to really continue to make a statement, River Hamilton is. Like, this is a big spot, just gave up the double. Kai McGarry's a highly ranked, really talented player. 0-2, you got him 0-2. Can you punch him out? Can you put him away? That'd be a huge second out of the inning if so. They helped him out with that bunt attempt. Ooh. Perfect spot. Great, great take by McGarry. Outstanding take by McGarry. But that was a perfect spot for that pitch. When McGarry attended PG National this year, it was unique and fun for him. He was home as someone who lives in Phoenix, a chance to go into Chase Field, his home stadium, and play. Save a few hotel dollars as well. Breaking ball. That had as much effect as a changeup as it did the break itself. Tight break, but again, just about three or four inches. Yeah, and that's just setting them up. Put a fastball in a perfect spot before that, get a take. But yeah, that's just a, it's a cutter is what he's throwing. Really he throws did. a curveball and a cutter. I, I was talking to the scouts who were behind the plate or uh, breaking them down for us back there, but he throws a, a curveball and a cutter, and that was the cutter. It's firmer, it's mid 80s, uh, maybe even into the upper 80s. Just a little bit of a wrinkle on a fastball, and it was a great pitch, well executed. And now that we know that, that makes a lot of sense. That's the bigger breaking ball. Goes to the backstop, and Barrett moves to third. Yeah, you uncovering that makes it clear because that had that that has that color cutter wrinkle to mm -hmm. it. And it's that's become a very popular. Not that it ever wasn't a popular pitch, but nowadays it's it's kind of like the thought is, hey, if if you can't spin a plus slider or you can't spin a plus curveball, if if you have trouble doing that. We're just going to give you a cutter. And it's kind of revolutionized careers, actually. Josh Hartle at Wake Forest is a really good example of this. He was an, a projectable lefty his whole prep career. The velo never really came. So at Wake, they gave him a cutter. And now that's become such a dynamic weapon, he's, he's back into where he's going to be a first rounder. Beautiful bunt. Up the line, that's an RBI. Great attempt, by the way, by Jace Hampson, yeah. who nearly turned it into an out, but that's an RBI. That ties it up at four. Yeah, that, that's going to go as a base hit. It was a perfectly located bunt. Hampson almost made 
an unbelievable play here defensively. No chance to get the runner at the plate, whether this is a safety squeeze or whatever it is. But Hampson flipping the hips and throwing accurately like that with a speedy, speedy runner there in Slater DeBrun, it's an excellent play from third base. Boy, it's turned this into a good one here in the top of the fourth inning. Right up against 70 pitches for River Hamilton as he deals with Carter Johnson now. Carter crushed the baseball. That one skips by. Runner moves into scoring position again. Yeah, back in the third inning, you thought this was leaving the yard. Yeah, I thought he got this one, but I, I am still a sucker for gorgeous left-handed swings. They sometimes oh. fool me, but that was the ball was hit really well. It's just I keep coming back to you. I'm going to say this for the fourth time already. The tension-free, easy bat speed and power creation, the backspin creation, man, it's fun to watch. So CJ, the Alabamian, will settle back in. See that ranking in that number 25 spot. Two and oh, the count to Carter. Seventeen and a half years old for this talented athlete. Change up. You know, it's interesting, Brian. He's in that 25 spot in the rankings, which means he's had a wonderful second half this summer and kept opening your eyes. Mm -hmm. He was not a PG All-American. Mm -hmm. It's uh, he had to be knocking on the door. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. A uh, guy who stood out with Team USA earlier in the summer, uh, played well in Hoover for us when we saw him at the Elite down there. Um, and obviously kind of continuing just a, a really torrid summer. A guy who can, looks like he's going to hit, hit for power, has a chance to play shortstop, is left-handed. Kind of what you want. Checks a lot of boxes. He had that, that big blast. He's walked three times in this event as well. He's got a pair of hits. And he scored five runs as he takes a pitch just on the inside corner. Three and two, the count. And the MVP of that 17U PG Alabama World Series. Six hits, six for ten with two walks at that event. Yeesh. Good way to stand out. Wow. That was the MVP of that high school showdown as we were talking about. Had five hits and two walks at that event including a huge home run. 3-2, fights it off. It dies in front of the shortstop. Agbayani's got a really strong arm. Played that one very peacefully. But a beautiful bunt. Slater to Brun, his speed played it. Barnett, we're tied. Oh, a, a little bit of a bow on Fernando Palencia here, Darren. I really was impressed with him. I'd never seen him before. A little bit of an undersized guy, but really good delivery. The way he gets down the mound is fluid. It's athletic. Lots to like about the operation. Was up to 94 with the fastball. Pitched at 90, 92, 93. Change up, breaking ball, strikes. Was setting guys up. Was executing. Really liked my look there and definitely will push for him to rise up in the rankings next time we do those. I love that. What a great assessment. Did you say he got up to 94? He did. Yes. That's your guy. I inaccurately said earlier, folks, that he was at 93, and at that point he was at 91, and he kept climbing. Kept climbing. He heard you. He heard you. That's all. The, all. all the family gathered around. They were calling relatives and neighbors over. Darren said he's at 93. I was wrong, but I'm glad he jumped past that. <laughs> you were wrong still, but the other way. Now. Yes. No, yeah. I'm yep. glad to be wrong yeah. that way. <laughs>
Nico with the chance. He singled, was caught stealing back in the second inning. Yeah, it takes it outside here. from Ford Thompson. So Ford at perfect game events has been seen up to 91 miles an hour. That was actually the summer of 2022 when he touched that number. Low, blocked up just to keep it in front by Josh Springer, but a, a quality at bat by Nico getting comfortable left on left with a walk. He's been on twice today. That's what your job is. You know, you're not a power guy, whether that's your approach or whether that's because of physical limitations, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. That's your job. Get on base. Make contact. Move runners. Be the runner on to be moved. Steal bases. That's your job. From Pearl City, Hawaii, Logan Sanchez, who singled last time up. Close at first. Nice little move from Thompson. Thompson played up at this event last year. Came here with the TGD back scout team. Touched 88 miles an hour through a couple of innings here at Jupiter. Struck out three as a junior in high school. Little step off move. He fires it over. He's traveled team for quite some time while playing through the summertime or the, the Todd Green D-backs, if you will, TG D-backs. Just missed with that fastball. Well, there is some deception as it pertains to the runner as he goes home. Interesting now with a left-handed arm on the mound trying to do the bunting, trying to, to maybe put a runner in motion, do something creative here to get that runner done to second base. It changes the, the dynamic of it when it's a lefty on the mound versus a righty. Two and oh, the count. Son of Joseph and Roberto working out on the mound. Dad played at Truett McConnell. Dad played a little bit post high school baseball, that is. Left-hander's an 18U national team alum. 3-0. Skips by. Runner moves up. This has all the makings of a tight game to the very last moment. Absolutely. And after my first couple games this week, Darren, we, I've seen some really good teams and some really good players, both blowouts. I've been looking forward to something like you this. You don't have that today, Brian. No, not today. You do not. You can just feel it, you know. A little bit of tension in both dugouts. Both teams understanding that, look, we, we, we want to play tomorrow, but we want to play a game that has champions in, implications. And you'll play tomorrow no matter what, but you, it's a consolation game if you lose in this contest. Fourth. Ford's been in a lot of big situations throughout his amateur time. A little bit off the mark trying to find the strike zone. Wait, well, tried to get out of the way, and he fouls it off. The, uh, the small ballers are fearless. You say that for sure, because it's you're kind of putting your teeth out there in the way when you're swearing around a bunt, especially left on left against a dude thrown from behind your hip. Uh, so definitely fearless. Ford finds a strike zone, three and two the count. Four-year varsity baseball player at Parkview. He's also one younger, played basketball, played soccer, swam, swam competitively and mixed martial arts competition as well. Multiple sports. Body not locking into just those baseball movements, and they want to know if he went around. He did not. That's ball four. Good at bat. Good at bat. It's tough to, to not only take, obviously, and that's a difficult at bat given the angle and the left-handedness of it all, but it's even more difficult, I would say, to lay off pitches when you're in bunt mode. Because your whole thought is, i got to get this down, i got to get this down, i got to get this down. Your thought is not necessarily like, 
pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. You know, so that takes a, a certain level of discipline. It takes a certain level of, of sort of focus beyond normal. And that's a great at-bat as a result. You got to walk, work the count full, got in the pitch count a little bit here of the reliever, allowed his hitters on the bench to see more of his pitches coming in, and still got to first base and didn't have to wear one in the face to do it. And the play off the bag so he can get a comfortable lead at first with the runner ahead of him. Look at the uniform of Bruin Agbayani. Just doesn't that seem appropriate for who he is as a player? Absolutely. I'd be upset if he wasn't. Front you side know. dirty. <laughs> back side dirty. Jersey muddy and dirty. If he was clean by the fourth inning, I'd ask him if he took the day off. <laughs> I've never seen him play, and it's it's everything I thought it would be and more. As that one misses outside. He, by the way, is, to me anyway, from what I'm seeing from, from this vantage point, an excellent shortstop as well. Mm -hmm. It looks very uh, looks very athletic, looks very smooth and controlled, and the actions are advanced. He just looks like a really well-rounded, good player. Goes to work, first pitch, fly ball, center field, over and off the glove of Gamble, who cannot make the play. They're racing around the base pads. Agbayani to third. Now we've got him held up. There's some trouble. Agbayani's at third. They'll run the runner back to the bag. And Agbayani, who had such amazing speed, came right up on the backside of Sanchez. They put a stop sign up last minute. Or Sanchez made his own stop sign. I think what happened is Agbayani was so up his back, as you said, that when everyone was coming around third base, Coach wheeled the first two runners, but then held up the stop sign for Agbayani. And he was so close to Sanchez that Sanchez thought he was talking to him. You're exactly so right. So he just he stopped short there, and, and, and that's unfortunate because that would have probably been two runs for sure. But... Uh, Still, in a situation here, man on third lesson two, cash this run in. But I'm pretty sure that's what went down. I think you nailed it, my friend. I think you nailed it. I think he was just so close that Sanchez thought he was talking to him. Well, and it's always with regard to, here, here's, a, here's an angle of it, at least. This ball's crushed. Really, it's just that you have to hit the ball so hard, to, you know, for that, like, kind of fade off the middle um, that, that draw, sort of, if you're talking about a golf swing. Like, that ball was crushed. It was on the barrel straight away, big part of the park, burned the center fielder. And, of course, of course it was Bruin Agbayani. It's interesting. If you think about Sanchez and you think, okay, why? Why was, it, why was he right on his backside? I think Sanchez thinking, I need to see this ball get over his head. And he did. It, I don't, Agbayani can run all he wants. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think it glanced off the glove, but it was very, very close. Like, that's a, you have to wait. You can't be taken off on that. He did the right thing. It was just a, um, a split-second miscommunication on accident. Yeah, I think you analyzed that one perfectly in noting the third base coach going down the line, did throw up that stop sign, and he was doing it for Agbayani. That's dad actually coaching out there. <laughs> dad threw up the stop sign for son. Sanchez was just about by him but saw the stop sign. Stumbled and tumbled. One, two. Reaches out, pops that one up with the infield drawn in. Cutting in front, calling that one off is Carter Johnson. First out of the inning. Second out, I should say. We're going to get a look here at the, the relay. Yeah, that's that's definitely what happened. So he threw up because because Agbayani was already there. Bruin was already there, so he was stopping him. But Sanchez was so close, he thought he was talking to him. That's unfortunate. They do get the one. They do lead it five four. You always get greedy in that play. Now, they might have had a shot at throwing them out at the plate, but you make them do that. You know, you make them throw you out at the plate at that point. Absolutely. Relays and pulling everything together with an oncoming runner. It's a difficult play. Here's Adam Haight, 1-0 the count. Agbayani down the line at third. Went around on that one. And you think about the importance of Josh Springer, who had a beautiful throw earlier in this game. And he's been a little bit wild, has Ford Thompson. Springer's got to keep that baseball in front of him. Runner at third, bearing down, looking for it to squeak by. As it does, to yep. the backstop it goes, and a run scores. I'm not, I'm not putting these. I, I, I think Springer has had 
a couple that he should have had in this the bout of wild pitches today. I think he's had a couple that he should have had that I would, like, as a former catching coach or whatever, say, like, that's on you, man. But a lot of these he hasn't had a chance on. That one he didn't have a chance on. That was on. nowhere close, yeah, right, Brian? It, no, that one was... You know, like, I'm, I'm hard on catchers because I was one and I coach them, and, like, that, that's a thing for me, and, and but... I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give him the benefit of the doubt on a, on a fairly significant number of these. Boy, beautiful hands, but the throw is off the mark. Tough break for Kale Fountain because you had to have the softest, most reactive hands to make that play. Yeah. But then he had an uneasy throw, if you will. He did the hard part. He, yeah. he did the hard part. He, he, he made it look easy, and but then, yeah, just kind of yanked it. Mm kind of where our booth is set up beyond the third base side so you could just see how smooth and easy that play was made another chance though and now Matthew Henning he singled in a run back in the first inning and he takes strike one belt high over the outside corner six four fourth inning bottom half late reaction of strikes on the batter, runner at first. No balls and two strikes to count. Goes out, pokes it into center field. It's a base hit. Nice short approach. Good looking first to third base running, by the way, by Adam Haid as well. Haid with absolutely no hesitation around second base there. That was, he just kind of took a quick peek into center, saw where the ball was, and, and immediately turned on the Jets for third. That's good base running. Good coaching to be coached to base run that way. But yeah, not, again, not trying to do too much. Liner over the second baseman's head. Just take what you get and, and put the barrel on it. And, yeah, really good base running by Haid there. A quick little breakdown on Ford Thompson, our lefty this inning. Has been generally in the mid-80s. He's been up to 88 with the fastball. Has found some comfort with the changeup. Uh, that's been kind of in that 79, 81 range. The slider's been a little soft. That last one was a single off of a slider. And it looks like we're going to have another pitching change here, maybe. Yeah, they're going to go to the bullpen. We'll reset the situation. It's another left-hander getting the call out of the bullpen. Kale Gahan out of Oxford, Michigan. A Duke commit. If I said his name improperly since he's a Michigander, when we come back, Brian will correct me. Six to four is the score. And, of course, this team, Bombat, one and one in the standings. They had an opportunity to, to have a big win earlier. And it was uh, four runs just like that that they scored against GBSA, who did rally, who did win. Now they're looking to turn tail and get it going on the other side. Turn it around and have the same kind of give back. Kale Gahan is from Lake Orion Community High School. They had a big win this year, a big run against uh, Orchard Lake St. Mary's. They knocked them off in the playoffs. Yeah, they ended the St. Mary's State Championship streak. Kale Gahan was their ace. Uh, I don't believe he pitched that game. I think he had to pitch the district semifinal to get them to get to that game. But either way, I've seen Gahan pitch well. I have. It's funky, as you see right there. It's funky. It's unique. It's kind of... Uh, aggressive and moving at you with moving parts and moving limbs. I've seen him up to 90, 91. He'll spin a slider at the back foot of righties from that slot. He was committed to Memphis originally, but when Carrick Jackson left to go to Missouri, he opened up. Duke saw him pitch, I believe, in Georgia at, at one of our events and immediately had him on campus and snapped him up. Which was good news to his parents, Troy and Nikki. Exciting stuff. He's the big brother to Kennedy Gahan, who's 15 years old. Runners on first and third. Big opportunity for him, and you know Bombat thinking, let's add on now. Absolutely. Don't let this get into the place where you're going to start having to flirt with the timer. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe not completing the seven innings because of the time limit we have in pool play to keep things moving along. You don't want to get to that point. Just kind of keep tacking on now. Chris Daniels gets the call. He's out of Pasco, Washington. He is the pinch hitter. He's a third baseman by trade. Looking to double steal one. It's bobbled. Head first flop into second base, but the run already scored. That flop feels totally fine because the run scored. He did his job. 
yeah. little, little hate scored. Little delayed steal, kind of rundown temptation play there. Peak West Coast baseball, if I may say so myself. But uh, that's exactly what happened. It, that that's a delayed steal. It's a double double uh, crow hop and then go. All you're trying to do there is elicit a throw. You want that run to come home, and you really don't even care if you get tagged out there. You're trying to get that run home. That's exactly what happened, and they were aided by a bad throw. Now, big chance for Daniels. They brought him in as a right-handed bat for the left-handed hitting Selga. He's got a chance to drive in a run now. That breaking ball stays high. Three runs in this inning. How about Bombat? They get up 4 nothing, and then, you know, they throw the first punch, and then it's really easy to get down on yourself when you let the other team tie it up. But their response to that was just to punch back. Add on with the baseball skipping by. They score three, Bombat does in the inning. And now for Bombat, they go to the pen. Opportunity to take a look at a right hander here. Looks like this is Hate. Adam Hate in, maybe? Adam Hate has yeah. made the move. You're exactly right. I think they're going to kill the DH and bring him in to pitch, and that allows him to uh, stay in the three hole. So for those maybe unfamiliar with the rule, you see it in college all the time, too, where a guy who's a two-way player, he'll start the game as the DH, and then when it's his time to come into the game on the mound, he the team just drops having a DH, and he stays in that number three hole in the lineup as the pitcher this time. The pitcher gets to leave the game, the DH is gone, but the lineup stays the same. Chance to get back to work, Josiah Hartshorn, first pitch. Fastball, some giddy up over the outside corner. And with that three run lead, this man who already has a single was hit by a pitch, scored a run. And you got that run in the bottom half of the fourth inning, the mind goes to a certain direction. It becomes a countdown of outs, and it's under 10, and you start it. You think, all right, we got to get three, three, and three. That's nine outs we need, and we're counting them down with that three-run lead as that one is rolled foul up the third base side. And the way that we are ticking away on the time clock for the game, yeah, it's talk to me. Where probably are we at? less than three. I don't, I don't have the specific, but this was a 10-20 start, right? And I think we started on time. And we started on time. It may be a couple minutes either way, whatever it was, the specifics. But we're afternoon now, so we're probably down under 20 minutes left of game clock. We're not going to play three innings. Hmm. Ground ball to short. There's that kid again. There's that arm again. Agbayani with the play. A little cannon on that Absolutely. shoulder. He's kind of got all the tools, huh? With a dirty uniform, too. Hits left-handed. 
really good player. Yeah, this is just a, you know, a routine ground ball, the short, but there's a lot you can take from watching a player feel the routine ground ball, and he's balanced. The hands work well. It's a solid enough arm to play on that left side. Looks good. I had a feeling I double-checked as that one hits the outside corner. Sean Gamble, who's walked twice. Agbayani wearing number 50. In memory, did serve, but I double-checked. Dad wore 50 as well. Did he? During his time. Outstanding. A very famous Met number 50, if you will. I'm trying to think. You, you try and think back on Betty Agbayani, some of those big years. He had an 868 OPS as a Met in 2000. He had an 888 OPS in 1999. Did Benny, Dad, Benny Agbayani. Playing 200 plus games in those two years back to back. Those are some gaudy numbers. No question. No wonder they love the, the slugger. We have had some velocity in this game, Darren. Haight already up to 93 with the fastball here in his first inning of work. So that's three guys we've had at least that high so far. And this beyond that 93 was a gorgeous change. Yeah, that's outstanding. I, you know, no, you don't want to, uh, what it sounds like making fun of a player, and I assure you I'm not, but. Uh, we missed that one by about four and a half feet there, and that just speaks to the quality of the pitch. Against a man who Brian told me, I, I'm not exaggerating, that I call one of the best high school players any grade in the country. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Three pitches. It's entirely possible that Sean Gamble has never in his life taken a swing that bad, and that's okay. <laughs> no one's, that, that doesn't do anything to him negatively. Like It doesn't impact our opinion. That was a dynamic changeup. Good-looking fastball just off the plate to Kale Fountain to, to put a bow on our talented shortstop's dad. Benny Agbayani, a shortened career, certainly, but he finished his career with an 806 OPS career. Absolutely. Did it get him? Ah, just off the plate inside. And that's kind of the mark now, uh, you know, 800, uh, whatever 800 roughly equates to in terms of, like, weighted runs created plus or, or OPS plus or whatever. Um, you know, we have better judges of, of offensive production statistically than just OPS now. But generally speaking, 800 is about the, you know, if you're over 800, you were producing offensively, generally speaking. If you're under 800, how well do you play defense? <laughs> Shot foul, third base side. And Agbayani finished his career with regard to advanced metrics with a weighted runs created plus number of 109 in his career. With high water marks of 122 and 127 in 99 and 2000. I'm loving watching Sun play shortstop. Good at bat. Yep. There's a big base runner with two outs. You hope you can get just one little letdown, one crack when a pitcher like Haight is pitching so confidently. Mm. And that could be it right there. 92, 93 miles an hour with the fastball so far. He's thrown one slider, but we've seen that change up. 85, 87. All kinds of tumble, all kinds of fade, all kinds of deception. Dynamic against left-handed hitters, as we saw against Sean Gamble. But now he's got to face righties. Let's see if that breaking ball comes out a little bit more. Let's see if the fastball becomes a little bit more of a challenger, or if he just stays with that changeup against the right handed hitters. Call to the bench. And we're peeking, trying to figure out number 30 on the roster, taking a peek down. Players don't have an assigned number. I know Ethan Armbruster is not here. He's a baby playing up over the freshman event. Carlier Delgado is one of the athletes without a number. This could be him. I believe that's who that is, is Carlier Delgado. Or or it's Maglio Ordonez. It could be Maglio. Okay. It could be Maglio. I thought you'd appreciate that. I'm not going to tell you it's not Maglio. <laughs> I, we need to see him against Houston Street to make sure. But, uh, you know, I, that might be Maglio. <laughs> Delgado, a catcher, a switch hitter. He's from Kissimmee, Florida. That one good pitch on his knuckles right inside. Delgado goes to Central Point Christian. And he's playing up. He's a 20-25. He's here to help the catchers catch for sure. But on occasion, you get a big chance, this 16-year-old. And this is one of those to extend an inning.
Carlier rolls that one foul third baseline. He had three hits. He had two walks at the underclass event over in Fort Myers. The underclass, I call it underclass Jupiter, but mm -hmm. it's in Fort Myers. And that was just in some limited playing time. So, you know, he got on base five times for a comfortable 833 on base at that event. A gentleman's 833 on base. Yeah, that's <laughs> Had some nice stops at 16 new events this summer as well. Played well at the BCS. Is that breaking ball is high and inside. Played well at the Florida Elite Championship in Auburndale, Florida. It was all tournament there. It's been a it's been a good summer for him. I was curious to see how much frequency we'd see the changeup against right-handed hitters. And you know, it's not so much a hard and fast rule anymore that you don't throw same side changeups. We see that more and more coming out where if you have a good one and you can command it, it can be dynamic. But it hasn't changed at all. He's still throwing changeups against right-handed hitters, and that's you know, we like to see that. Guys have confidence in their best pitch. And now time is called. Get a new baseball in. Also, take some more time off the clock. Yeah. Don't know if that time needed to be called to run the baseball out to the umpire. A little gamesmanship there. A little gamesmanship Strategy. there. Strategy. The they have the advantage. They're up and are the home team. Back to the screen it goes. And, folks, if you're watching at home, whether this is a Jupiter marquee game that we're broadcasting or any other travel baseball game that we put on at any age level at any part of the year in any part of the country the coaches know how much time is left on the clock okay they are asking the the diamond cast worker the scorekeeper behind the plate and they are uh, manifesting their game plans to support to support it <laughs> you gotta walk the fountain you gotta walk to springer a big opportunity for colt myers and, yes, there is some time coming off the clock, but now things get dangerous. Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't matter what the clock is if you're going to let runs score, you know. And Agbayani reminding his outfielders, no doubles. Make sure it doesn't get over your head, and we'll have a visit to the mound. We've enjoyed the work today of Bruin at short. We've enjoyed the work with Bruin with a bat in his hands. This is with a bat in his hands. Yeah, another, you know, he's he's got multiple hits today. Uh, that one was, was really tattooed, this triple that he hit up the alley uh, in left center field. He's a good runner. Haven't had him on a burn time to first to, like, really quantify it grade-wise, but clearly he's a good runner and a good athlete. He's a good defender at short, leadoff hitter, grinder mentality. Just a, a good overall player. He's, we talked about it early in the open. He's very much on the cusp of that top 100 in the 2025 class. I said, hey, with a good Jupiter performance, you will rise. You'll get into that top 100. I think we can pretty comfortably say that the next time we rank 2025s, Bruin Agbayani will be in that top 100. Colt Myers now. A couple of runners on. Two outs in the inning. The bomb staff's done a great job with this team. Their energy, it's fun. Quickly reminding you, it's Nick Lubish. Nick Lubisich, my apologies, former White Sox farmhand, owner operator of Northwest Futures and Bomb Bat. James Nigren, who was a Marlins farmhand, right handed pitchers on the staff. Mark Tyler, who's director of ops for Elevate Northwest. And of course, Benny, Benny Agbayani. Nick Lubisich, though, the main man. When you talk about the scouting report, they just shared one simple sentence. We're a mix of talent from Hawaii and the Pacific Northwest. Two regions that go well together. They always have. Oop, don't want that. 2-0 and oh the count. Settle. This is the pressure situation. Just settle. Your stuff is really good. You know, you don't have to think about being fine with the command. Trusting your stuff becomes such an important part of a young pitcher's development. And that that's, doesn't necessarily just mean like, oh, I trusted enough to throw it. No, trusted enough to throw it in the zone. Trusted enough to, to make the hitter react to it. And that's what uh, we're seeing kind of in real time here with Hate. We've seen a really good changeup. He struggled a little bit more against the right-handed hitters in terms of command. The breaking ball maybe isn't as comfortable or confident for him as the, as the changeup is. Trust it, man. It's good stuff. Make them hit it. 
2-1 fastball, fly ball, down off the end of the bat, hold in out there by Matthew Henning. Henning took a couple of steps, it was right there. There was a scare, certainly, but things hold steady. Up against the clock right now, bomb bat on top, 7-4. 7-4 to the score. We are on the Marlins portion of their spring training complex here in Jupiter, Florida. And I'm not surprised to see a pitcher that's ready to go to work. Mm -hmm. An opportunity to see Jake Hiramoto hit. Jake gets the call. And the left-hander is going to be moving pretty quickly, there's no doubt. Kale Gahan as quickly as he can. That's a tough call, too, by the way, for, for Hiramoto. When, you know, you get a call off the bench and tell him, hey, take a few, we need to take our time. He wants to swing, so he does swing, and it's a quick out. I mean, kudos to this left-hander. It's about exactly, uh, I mean, it couldn't be a better start if you're, if you're thinking from USA Prime's perspective. You have to be quick this inning. You have to get three outs in, like, five minutes or something like that if you want to play the sixth, if you want to get another opportunity. So, Kale Gahan going out and attacking. Getting a quick strikeout, exactly what you need. He's back on the rubber. He's ready to roll. I don't think you'll see him take a walk no matter what happens. And here's the thing you've got to remember, which still is in the favor of, of the bomb bat as far as the two-hour time limit. They're still only going to have to get three outs at that. Yes. yes. So you, you do lose a full inning. You have yep. to get outs. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a big break when you're dealing with that team. 100%. Three less outs, three less opportunities for them to hurt you. Yeah, that's a big advantage in this situation. And a walk certainly is in the favor for a lot of reasons. As Young's been on twice, he singled back in the third. Now he walks. There is the concept of rushing. There is the concept of hurrying, which isn't always the friend of a pitcher. And officially about three minutes to go in this one. And it's not a drop dead. That just means that once this inning comes to an end, the game will come to an end. This would be drop dead in this situation. Home team You're ahead, right. bottom half, they drop it Thank here because the, the reason for that is it's not really the time. It's the runs scored and runs allowed matter in seeding purposes. So once the game ends, you know, home team's ahead, they win, ball game's over. We don't want to finish that inning. Maybe they score two more runs that shouldn't be scored or shouldn't be counted, and that then influences the, the seeding of the playoffs. So that's why we'll drop it. Oh, and to the count. This looks to be, as we get right around and under three minutes, looks to be this game coming to an end. Swing and a miss. Runner moves up to second, which is big because that keeps the double play out of order. Might see a couple uh, offensive timeouts here. <laughs> Something but like that. But it was that. a strikeout anyway. <laughs> yeah, runner moves to second. And as you said, we're kind of hovering at that. Yeah. Two we'll minute find mark out. Or so we'll find out when the home plate umpire finds finds out. Well, he'll uh, the scorekeeper behind will we'll call it out and let him know, and then that's how we'll find out. One and zero oh the count. Nico has walked and scored. He has also singled. He's got a runner in scoring position. And he steps out of the box. A little bit of strategy, certainly. Mm -hmm. One and one the count. So what would happen is if USA Prime is able to record this third out, even if there's one second left on the, on the game clock, then we will play the top of the sixth inning. We'll give them their, their more, one more at bat. We'll roll it into that. And then if they were to tie it or take the lead, we would, of course, play the bottom half. But, uh, yeah, there's no chance of a seventh inning. Boy, things are tight. Two strikes on the batter right up against it clockwise. Breaking ball is high. Guessing right around that minute mark now. Strikeout would be huge. It's in the dirt. Three and two the count. Trying to get one more chance, one more bat. Three runs could be nothing for this team. Fouls it off, hangs around. Michigander on the mound. 
Springer at second. Outside corner, that's strike three. And without any word, we will play a top. Or that'll do it. Time is called. Celebration in that third base dugout. They were right up against it, Brian. Yeah, they were. I, I don't, I, I'm going to be interested to see. The first place I go after we wrap here is going to be behind the plate to ask exactly what that was. I'm curious what uh, how much time they needed to, to maybe go to the sixth there. But either way, big win from Bombat. We talked about it already. They gave the first punch. They took one back and then returned the favor. So love to see teams who play like that, who battle like that. They move on to 2 and one not for sure, but most likely an at-large bid, probably an at-large bid. We'll see. And unfortunately, at 1-2, and two, that's going to do it for the playoff aspirations of this USA Prime Detroit Tigers scout team, one of the favorites coming in. And they'll get a chance to play one more game in front of the scouts in a consolation game. Great job, my friend. I really appreciate all that you have done so far. Can't wait to have you back tomorrow. David Ronzi will hop in and be a part of the broadcast. DBAT United against GBGTB SoCal, Southern California team. And we'll take a brief pause. We'll get going in about a half hour from now. But until then, we thank both of these teams for introducing themselves to us. Their communication has been outstanding, certainly. We're excited to watch both these teams, one team based in Texas, but with players from all about the country. Another one based up in Portland, Oregon, with a talented bunch of Hawaiians as well. A bright future for so many. From Ruin Agbayani to Jace Hampson, Adam Haig with a big arm on the mound, also reached a couple of times and scored a couple of runs. A pretty swing from Carter Johnson. Down at the bottom, loved watching Kai McGarry, the Arizona player, along with Slater DeBrun. A lot of great names. We'll be back soon with another. He's Brian. I'm Darren. We'll see you soon.